Nikki Maxwell Van Exel, born November 27, 1971. Cancun on three. Pat Beverly most recently used that term against Damian Lillard to suggest his team would be eliminated early while Pat's was destined for a championship run. Well, he had 50% right. But the term was coined more famously by today's feature that shouted those words in celebration just before being swept in the playoffs by the Utah Jazz. After being snitched on and word got back to management, it wasn't well received and he was shipped out. Although it wasn't that simple, which I'll explain later, it became the highlight of sorts of his 14-year career and further stained his name as a player both teammates and coaches didn't get along with. Besides that, he was a sharp-shooting lefty that got a late start at the game but went on to become an all-star and one of the best point guards of his era in my opinion, even if that was overshadowed by his unfavorable personality. Here are three reasons Nick Van Exel's growth was stunted. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Ash, get it, man. Quick reminder, the patron page is now lit. There, you can get ad-free Stunted Growth features, behind-the-scenes training videos, consulting, and one-on-one -on -one conversations with me. Become a patron now and show your support. When I reach 10 patrons, I'll be sending those 10 free hoodies from the merch store. So make sure you go ahead and check that out. Link is below. Enjoy the video. Stunt number one, Late Bloomer. Nick Van Exel is from Kenosha, Wisconsin and developed a love for basketball during his youth mostly because being an only child and his mother always at work, the basketball courts were his only place of safety and refuge. He'd spend hours there even when his mother returned home, usually neglecting his schoolwork. Unlike most successful NBA journeys, Nick's didn't have the stellar four-year high school career most did. He began his as a junior and only played two years at that level, but took his team to the state finals from 1987 to 89. With the neglect of his books that followed him into high school, this led to him not qualifying for a Division I scholarship, and so he made his way to Trinity Valley Community College where he'd spend his first two college seasons. It was those two seasons where ex-teammates remember him as disruptive, abusive, verbally and physically toward females at times, even allegedly sending a 6'8 teammate to the hospital. I kicked him one good time were Nick's exact words. Nick's recollection of his JUCO experience was that it was the worst time of his life and very racist. Despite this, he put up good numbers, averaging 18 and 5 year 1 and 20 points and 7 assists year 2. With his grade requirements now complete, he transferred to Cincinnati, where he immediately helped turn the Bearcats program around from missing the tournament prior to his arrival to making the Final Four when he arrived. As a senior, with Nick Van Exel as the leader at 18 points per game, they made the Elite Eight and won their conference title. Van Exel's blossoming would be late again after going 37th in the NBA draft, picked by the Lakers and having the battles of a second round pick financially. On the court, it worked out for him, getting to play right away with the Lakers in rebuild mode and only Vladi Divac and Anthony Peeler challenging his leadership. Had he went in the first round like his talent suggested, he would not end up in a place like LA, where he recalls as uncomfortable at times with the Hollywood distractions, and also players he met later that directly affected his playing career. Stunt number two, a bad seed. It's what general managers told Jerry West when he drafted Van Exel, who West recalls reminded him of himself, attitude and competitively. But that wasn't how most of his past and present teammates and associates remember him. Most importantly, George Carl. The reason Van Exel even went as late as the 37th pick was directly related to George Carl, as the two bump heads during their workouts. The Supersonics, and especially Carl, saw something exciting in Van Exel and brought him in for an interview and workout. 
At his hotel, George showed up in a North Carolina hat, in my opinion, as a side dig at Van Exel, maybe to see if he'd get a reaction out of him, seeing as Nick and Cincinnati had just been eliminated by Carl's former coach, Dean Smith and the Tar Heels. Van Exel noticed and proceeded to give Carl the worst interview Carl says he's ever had with a player to this day. At the end, Nick made a remark that Dean Smith, with all the talent he had, should have won more as a dig at Carl. To which George responded, well, what makes you an expert at coaching? The two didn't exactly hit it off, and when it came time for the on-court workout, later that day, Van Exel showed up wearing a Duke hat in direct response to Carl's earlier jab. George laughed and said he loved it. Carl would get the last laugh, and instead of shooting drills and testing Nick's point guard skills, he ran him all workout and said Nick, quote, loafed through it all, and in the drills guys ran in 50 seconds, Van Exel took a minute and 10. Not exactly Nick the Quick. In his second attempt at the 50 second mark, Carl told Nick, if you loaf on this one, I'll tell the whole league and all the franchises not to take you and that you're a bad seed. Van Exel looked at the Tar Heel hat wearing coach and said, oh, this second one, this gonna be a cool down. Uh, he ran that one in a minute and 20 seconds, to which Carl could only chuckle, but admire his competitiveness and charisma, saying, you have to love the guy. Word would get back to the other teams, and Van Exel fell to Jerry West, another defiant player, and the Lakers. Then there was the more famous pushing of a ref and being ejected for calling the guy a midget. In 1996, during a game against the Nuggets, he didn't like a foul call against his teammate and made an unfavorable remark to referee Ron Garrison. He was hit with a technical foul and proceeded to follow the ref, making even more remarks such as, you little bleeping midget. Garrison teed him up again and he was ejected. Not responding to that well, he lunged at Garrison and shoved him onto the scorer's table and was fined by the league a record $187,000 and suspended seven games. He would clash with coaches on the sidelines often and reports were that he was too arrogant even for himself during his time in LA. Then, as a last straw, the Lakers were being dominated by the Utah Jazz in the 1998 Western Conference Finals, and after a loss in Game 2, the team participated in a ritual they do after practice, chanting Lakers, Lakers, Lakers. With the team holding hands ever so gently in the middle of an empty practice facility, Nick, who was late to the circle, approached, chanting Cancun, Cancun, Cancun. As he described it, he always did things like that and just wanted to keep everyone loose. The players didn't take well to it, especially Shaquille O'Neal, the team's superstar, who saw it as Nick had already quit with two games left. Shaq allegedly tiptoed up to management, mainly Jerry West, and snitched, secretly requesting the Lakers remove him and they did, trading him to the NBA graveyard at the time, the Denver Nuggets. The team was swept again the next season by the Spurs, but won the first of three championships the year following. Nick was putting up numbers in Denver, but could have seen a career jolt winning with the Los Angeles Lakers. Stunt number three, being traded from LA. Although Van Exel did have career years in Denver, being traded from the Lakers killed what was left of his resume as one of the best point guards of the 90s. He and the Nuggets never made the playoffs in his time there, and the term stat stuffer was usually related to his seasons in Denver. He asked for a trade after saying the team made no strides during his four years. He was also dealing with elbow and knee injuries that hurt the tail end of his Nuggets career and further on. He was traded to Dallas, then Golden State, and finally waived by Portland in 2005. He signed with the Spurs and played one season before retiring in 2006. 
All in all, Van Exel was an exciting player that had all the talent to have a stake on a championship team, but his attitude got in the way. It's what made him who he was, but also rubbed some the wrong way and hurt his legacy as a player. Him staying with LA, winning there, would have been huge for that legacy. He still had a solid career seeing where it began, but for these reasons, his growth was stunted. It's your boy JC, Stunted Growth, and I'm out. Also, visit StunnedGrow3.com right now. We have some new winter merch for all your fashion needs. We have the Legends Edition package, the Championship Edition, and much more to satisfy your winter fashion. Once again, visit StunnedGrow3.com right now. Please like and subscribe to this video for more content. It's your boy JC Stunned Growth, man. Let's get it.